Among the most delicious aspects of HBO Max's hacks are the epic insults and takedowns flung by comedy legend Deborah Vance. Here's our favorite brutal and audacious moments from the show. The only thing you're going to convert him to is from a top to a bottom. Okay. Now that's a better joke. Welcome to The Rewind. These are Deborah Vance's most iconic moments in hacks so far. Before we begin, make sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for good luck. Ava's Comedy Club Coffee Order. Can I get a coffee with, uh, do you guys have oat milk? No. Oh, millennials take such grief from everyone. So why not add Deborah Vance, who in episode eight, watches with amusement as Ava struggles to order coffee at a comedy club, unsure what to do when the club doesn't have any fancy milk options. But worry not, millennials. Ava quickly informs her that she is, in fact, Gen Z, and notes that millennials are like 40. Yeah. Emergency! Somebody get an EpiPen! Da Holy shit, this is nice. Oh, Epstein estate sale. No. Some of Deborah's best takedowns involve sarcasm, followed by amazement that the victim actually believed she was serious. When Ava sees Deborah's private plane for the first time in episode three, she compliments its swankiness, to which Deborah reveals she bought it cheap in Jeffrey Epstein's estate sale. No, stop acting like a hillbilly and sit down. There's no line. I guess I crossed a line or whatever. Oh, honey, no, there is no line. It's just not funny. In episode one, when Ava explains to Deborah that she's only there because Hollywood won't staff her because she got canceled for an offensive tweet, Deborah immediately asks to hear the tweet in question. But after Ava tells her and theorizes that she probably crossed a line, Deborah seems about to give her support. Instead, she blurts out something not so sympathetic. I mean, you should be blacklisted for how bad that joke is. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad we did this. I am starting to see why your husband left you for your own sister now. Embarrassing Marty in his own restaurant. Okay. And the fork! Almost immediately, we learn that Deborah Vance's old flame, Marty, who happens to own the casino of her residency in Vegas, wants her to do fewer shows per year so he can move in younger, hipper acts. But she knows it's just a first step to pushing her into retirement. Not only does she purposefully make a scene and demand her doggy bag, she steals his steak and fork and marches out with this zinger to the crowd of diners. Tour Bus Terror. Deborah Vance, y'all! Oh, thank you! Thanks. In episode three, Deborah makes a surprise appearance on a Vegas tour bus, pretending she doesn't know Ava and embarrassing her in front of the whole group of tourists with a series of harsh takedowns. Then, after she reveals Ava as an employee, she gets even harsher. No, don't get too excited. I haven't seen breasts that pale and sad since I toured the Tyson Chicken Factory. Oh! She never toured the Tyson Chicken Factory. Ava's arrogant doctor. Uh, miss, I know everyone has the internet now, but leave the diagnosis to me. Hmm? All right? You just need fluids. One of Deborah's biggest character moments happens in episode six when a snotty doctor dismisses Ava's concerns that her abdominal pain is more than just dehydration. When he waves her off and tells to stop researching her ailments on the internet, Deborah goes to town. Listen to her, you little prick. I am very litigious, and I would love nothing more than to bury you in more debt than medical school ever could. Dissing Ava's appearance. Oh, do you have like Huge hands? I think they're normal size. No, no, they look like catcher's mitts. Sure, Deborah's one-off takedowns are always fun, but she likes to slow twist the knife over time as well. 
Nowhere is this more obvious than her constant criticisms of Ava's fashion sense and even her looks. In episode 2, when Deborah rudely asks if Ava's a lesbian, Ava proceeds to share graphic sexual details about her bisexuality. Also in episode 2, Deborah offers her unsolicited take on Ava's hands. When Ava tells her some people think it's rude to make fun of other people's appearance, Deborah claps back with, yeah, ugly people. You know, some people think it's pretty cheap to make fun of other people's appearances. Yeah, ugly people. Deborah slams the MC. Anyway, she's got an incredible set and I think she's gonna tell some jokes too. <laughs> so, uh, you know who she is. Of all of Deborah's takedowns, her brutal slaying in episode 8 of a rude comedian slash MC who makes a sexist comment before she hits the stage might just be the highlight of this season. As he stands in the back of the room listening to her set, she puts her focus on him asking why he would say such things to female comedians. When she asks how much she could pay him to leave comedy forever, he jokingly yells, 69 million! Debra doesn't miss a beat. You know, no matter how long you're away, you come back, there's always a Drew who's gonna talk about your tits when he brings you out on stage. Death, taxes, and this fucking guy. You don't know hard, honey. Things got heated cup holders, no fucking spare tire. Okay, um, so we'll call AAA. My show's in 90 minutes, I can't wait. In episode two, Debra offers to take Ava for a drive in the desert so they can get to know each other. But it's just a ruse so that Ava can clandestinely buy her an expensive salt shaker at a shop run by someone who refuses to sell it to Deborah directly. Later, when Deborah's Rolls Royce breaks down in the middle of nowhere, Ava blows up at her about how hard she's making the gig. Deborah will hear none of it. You think this, this is hard? You don't know what hard is. You got plucked off the internet at, what, 20? You just got lucky. Oh, Marty, just stop talking. I hear you're doing a whole new hour for your final show? Mm-hmm. Come on, well, what is that? Deborah's interactions with Marty give us some of the best moments of the season. But in episode nine, when Marty shows up at the rehearsal for her final show to implore her not to diverge from her tried and true material because, well, he's worried she might embarrass herself, Deborah can't resist one last dig at his supposed good intentions. And you've always had my back, that way it's easier to stab. By my calculations, this is my theater till Saturday, so get the hell out. Wow, okay. That's gonna be it, folks. What did you think of our list? Before you leave, don't forget to give this video a like and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Check out these other videos from The Rewind, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads.